What are you doing, Max? What are you doing? Did you steal my pillows? Did you? Are you on my pillows? <laughs> hey, buddy. Are you a good boy? Are you a good boy? Do you want pets? Do you want snuggles? He looks very worried. He's like, don't touch me. Why? Good morning. I'm Taryn, this is Logan, and this is Max. Join us as we live and sail in the Pacific Northwest on our 40-foot steel sailboat. You might remember from last week that we said the bottom here seemed to be a mix of mud, rock, and shell. Well, it turns out that while anchored here for two nights, we had found one of those rocks and our chain had wrapped itself around it. We tried to pull the chain up, but there was no use. It was really stuck. Okay, going ahead. Yeah, Taryn, put the snubber on. So the tension's on the snubber and not on the windlass. Good? Luckily, this little bit of forward movement was enough to break the chain free. That's what we could fucking do last time. That was that anchoring experience. Or pulling up the anchor experience. Not the greatest. The chain right below us wrapped itself around a rock. Like we just kept spinning around and around it. So we had to put the snubber back on and then motor ahead and we were able to pull it out from under the rock. Luckily it wasn't attached to the bottom because it took quite a bit and then uh, it was also wrapped around another rock. At 100 feet it was wrapped around a rock and then at 75 feet it was wrapped around another rock or 50 feet somewhere in between. So if you're coming here to anchor just know that like deeper into the bay where we were kind of closer to shore is both rocky and muddy. I think where Marty and May anchored, which was like Here, farther away from the it shore, the map. it seemed to be a lot less rocky. They didn't have any issues hooking up either. We definitely, definitely had issues hooking up and then obviously pulling up we had issues. So good to keep in mind. That's the first bay that we've been in though that we've had a problem. So that's not too bad so far. Although the water was dead calm, we did get hit with a pretty quick and heavy squall. But as quickly as it arrived, it was gone. Well, that was quite the little squall. It was just like coming down like normal and then all of a sudden it was just like a shower. <laughs> that was crazy. It didn't last very long though. We had all of our hatches and portholes open so Logan ran around feverishly trying to close all of them before the boat got soaked. Now that that squall's gone over it's absolutely gorgeous out here. try to troll for salmon with the big boat, which is going to be tough because like at an idle in gear we're still doing faster, like we're doing probably over three knots. So, and what do we want to be doing? Like one and a half to two and a half, I think, for speed. 
spring. We set up two rods and trolled for salmon, hoping that by this time in July they would have come in, but we didn't have any luck. We arrived back to Napier Bay wet and without any fish. And it didn't take long before the rain found us again. But the next morning we woke up to nothing but calm water and singing birds. We had nothing but dead calm water on the way over, accompanied by a few porpoise sightings. And we decided this was the perfect weather to try and get our dysfunctional autopilot working. What are you doing? Trying to calibrate our compass again. We had tried to do this once before, but had not been successful. Although our autopilot runs and kind of works, it won't hold a course. We think this is due to magnetic interference with the compass in which it is too close to the steel hull. We did circle after circle trying to get the autopilot to work, but to no avail. Regardless of what we tried, the compass wouldn't calibrate. Not working. Is that your friends? Instead of heading to the marina, we decided to drop the hook in Port McNeil's Bay, which has great mud holding and is obviously cheaper than docking. So we made it to Port McNeil. We're just sitting at anchor out here. It is dead calm in the bay. We decided that we were just going to anchor in the bay instead of going into the marina this time because we didn't want to pay for it. That's the main reason. It's also just, it's calmer and peaceful out here instead of being in amongst a bunch of other people. Yeah, we had best intentions of getting moving and getting to land and showering and reprovisioning because we're down to our last provisions, but we're still on the boat. Got sucked into having internet again, I guess is the main thing. It is just beautiful out here. The forecasted winds still haven't picked up. I'm hoping that they don't because they were supposed to be southeast, so they'd be blowing right into the bay here if we do get them. But I guess we'll see. Yeah, for, it's just absolutely stunningly beautiful out here. It'll be good for a few days and then we can go back out exploring again. Sometime later in the day, a very thick fog rolled into the bay. It's so foggy outside right now that the ferry that's been running for hours and hours for like the past four hours has been blowing the foghorn. It's eerie out there. It's like the water's dead calm except for ripples from boats and I can see boat lights and like city lights but it's just like, it's so foggy, it's crazy. It's a good thing we don't have to go anywhere with the dinghy tonight. It was so cold and damp that we even put a wood fire on, in July. The north and west coast of Vancouver Island are known for being extremely foggy in August, which is nicknamed Foggest. But it was only July and we were kind of disappointed to see the weather shifting already. Can hear the boat. Definitely cannot see the boat. Eating up samosas for breakfast. Logan's making himself another coffee. Or a coffee. Is this your first one? Second coffee. Okay. The day doesn't truly start until second coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's nice enough I can get back to work on my autopilot project. So what's going on with your autopilot project? What's been happening? 
I'm doing a bit of a science experiment. Our Simrad wheel pilot doesn't work, and I'm not sure whether the Fluxgate compass is toast. The Fluxgate compass is basically an electromagnetic device that senses the direction of the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field. Or, I think it's because it's in a, like it's integral in the wheel pilot. So I can't move it. I kind of think it's because we, there's a lot of interference where it is, being a steel boat. And um, I can't get an external compass for it, or an external uh, flux gate or heading sensor, any of that stuff, it's obsolete. There are none. I've looked online, I just can't find them. So I removed the Fluxgate compass out of the autopilot, like disassembled it, took the, the Fluxgate out, it's on the table over there, and I went and picked up some wire, some really fine wire, and I'm gonna run that and move the compass to a different spot and just try a bunch of different spots and see if it works. So maybe later today or tomorrow we can go out and see if we can calibrate it. It's worth a try because a whole new autopilot system is out of our budget. We just can't afford it. So what is a whole new system probably going to cost us? Um, Anywhere from probably six to ten thousand dollars, and we just that is definitely not in the budget. So it would be nice to have this one work, but if it doesn't, we'll just be autopilotless still. It's probably a good thing <laughs> that we don't have an autopilot because it's helping us um, become better sailors. And uh, it's just, it can get a bit tedious on longer days and not being able to have one person sail the boat and handle sails and do all the stuff. Yeah, we need two of us at all times. Yeah. So it would be nice to have an autopilot so one person could sail, another person could either, you know, rest, um, repair something that's broken. Make or food. make food, uh, yeah, just all the normal things. Yeah. <laughs> but we make it work. Yep. So. So we're just getting ready to go do a big provision shop in town where we decided to take the morning and just watch TV in bed because we have internet. We can do that. And then now we're gonna head into town and get a bunch of groceries. Are you getting face scratch ups, bud? Are ya? Oh, nice. <laughs> Look at all that hair. Gross. <laughs> all right, let's get going. On the way to the grocery store, we decided we needed to stop and get a cookie and one of the best cinnamon buns on the North Island. They didn't disappoint. got the grocery shop done and I thought it was going to be quite expensive but it was actually under $300 so that's pretty awesome. Should keep us going for like two or three weeks. It helps a lot when you're catching some of your own meat and don't have to buy so much meat. day. Today we are going to go try to salmon fish and we're going to test to see if Logan fixed the autopilot. So we're in Port McNeil. We're going to leave Port McNeil and go north around part of Malcolm Island and then we'll probably head back and go anchor either south of Cormorant Island or we're going to go to Alert Bay. We also might end up here. We'll see. We've got options today which is cool and hopefully we catch a salmon. So, 
How you feeling, Logan? Good. I really, really hope our autopilot works. Yeah, fingers um, crossed. And if not, whatever. It's a beautiful sunny day and we'll get some fishing in. Even if we don't catch anything, it'll be nice to get out on the water again. Yeah, we've been here for... We've been sitting here, we've been sitting here for, I don't know, days. how long? Three days, four, four days. Four days at least, it's oh, been almost man. a week. It's been a crazy amount of time. Yeah. So it'll be good to go somewhere, not really different, but kind of different. And yeah, we... We might actually go somewhere different, we'll we've see. We've got boat projects done, and now we're gonna go test them out, because we're actually testing out our steering. Yeah. Because um, I changed a bunch of stuff, and it's not ideal, but it had a clunk in the wheel before, and there was some misalignment with the shaft, and we actually have to do some cutting and welding to fix it. Which we're obviously not doing right now. No, because we, we're gonna have to drop our rudder post and it needs a keyway cut in it. it needs to be welded and then a keyway cut in it if we can get that done yeah so anyway there's a bunch of work to be done to that yeah. and we've done some work well logan logan did all this logan did some work trying to kind of change the wiring with the autopilot to see if we can get it to work with the steel with the steel boat so yep yeah so we're gonna go do that and taryn has enough videos made now that we can we don't really need no we do need wi-fi i'm still behind on videos oh okay well whatever we should have wi-fi at our next spot anyway so yeah, yeah. cool trying to work a minute ago, and now it's not doing it. Thinking about calibrating. It's a good sign, I guess. So, we tried to fish, and then we tried to calibrate the autopilot, but we've got about 10 knots of wind against us, and the current against us, and because of that it's really hard to troll out here because the lures are, like, spinning too fast. So I think we're just gonna put the sail up and we're gonna head south and probably to Alert Bay or the islands that are behind Alert Bay. So fingers crossed we don't come across any weird current but the current's not supposed to be very much today. It's only supposed to be three knots so should be okay. There is potential for the autopilot to be able to calibrate once the seas are with us so if we even can get to a spot where there's not really any any wind, we might be able to try again. Wind, current, no wind, no off. current. That's the plan right now. Learning more stuff like usual. We couldn't get the autopilot to calibrate, even with calm seas. And after all this work, we decided it was best to just cut our losses and start planning for a new autopilot. After another failed attempt with the autopilot and deciding this was probably the end, we anchored in the beautiful Pierce Islands just south of Cormorant Island. Join us next week as we find some awesome wildlife and finally get a chance to catch a salmon while enjoying some incredible scenery. Thanks as always for being here with us, leaving us a comment and subscribing. It really helps to keep our adventures going. Mm -hmm.